Australia's $80 billion livestock industry is on edge over the deadly food and mouth disease, which has foot and mouth disease rather, which has reached barley. Now, some have likened it to COVID for cows in terms of spreadability and the required response they see. Demanding borders slam shut to the popular holiday destination. The fact is we know that it's in Bali and, and knowing that, knowing we've got a significant amount of people travelling to Bali, knowing that we're short-staffed if it manages to come into the country, I think it's a, it's a no-brainer that uh, we, we actually shut. It'd be a really wise move and I think the whole industry is supportive of that at the moment, knowing the ramifications of a, of a large-scale outbreak. Let's get on the front foot with this. I, th I believe it's time for the government to step up and say, look, let's, let's stop the travel immediately. The Federal Agriculture Minister, Murray Watt, he's in Indonesia and joined me a short time ago. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Good to talk to you. Yeah, it's a very brief visit, but a very focused one on the risk that Australia faces around foot and mouth disease, especially now that the outbreak has reached Bali. Uh, last week, uh, pretty much as soon as the outbreak reached Bali, we introduced new measures uh, at the Australian border to really ramp up some of the protections that we're putting in place with screening a lot more travellers when they're coming back, screening more luggage, parcels, increasing the number of detector dogs and increasing information to travellers. But what we're wanting to do and why I'm here is that this has got to be a two-pronged approach. Uh, we've got to keep taking those tough measures at home, and we will, uh, but we've also got to be working with our friends internationally to try to get this outbreak under control. Uh, so today I'll be meeting with both the Minister for Agriculture and the head of Indonesia's Disaster Management Authority uh, to make sure that they know that we stand ready to support them in any way we can to help this terrible outbreak get under control. So you're announcing a big bucket of cash today. What is it and what will it do? Yeah, we'll, we'll be announcing a couple of things while I'm here and some of them I still have to talk about with the ministers. Uh, but one thing that I can say is that uh, the Australian government will be providing half a million dollars uh, through Meat and Livestock Australia as an industry partnership to work with Indonesian feedlots to help them increase their awareness, increase their training and increase their procedures in terms of managing the outbreak in feedlots. Uh, there are a number of feedlots in uh, Indonesia and I met some of the owners and operators of them last night that in some cases have many thousands of cattle. Uh, some of them so far have remained FMD free but unfortunately we have seen the disease get into some of those feedlots and obviously with that number of cattle there, that's a very big risk uh, to contagion. Uh, so the money that we'll be providing to MLA will assist those feedlots, uh, make sure that all of their staff know what to do in terms of biosecurity procedures, how they can keep uh, cattle that might be infected separate from other ones, fairly basic things, but things that can really make a difference. So uh, we'll have a bit more to say over the course of the day about other support that we'll provide. Uh, and this, of course, comes on top of the offer uh, that the Prime Minister made in his trip to Indonesia recently to provide vaccines and technical assistance to Indonesia, uh, because it's in our national interest to help get, uh, Indonesia get this under, under control, just as, as it's about uh, helping Indonesia itself. So extra cash for MLA, will that be able to help them respond fast enough, though, given that this is right on our doorstep? Uh, well, we think that it will really make a difference when it comes to the feedlot sector, and that is one important part of the market. Uh, as I say, we have offered vaccines to Indonesia, particularly to assist some of their smaller farmers. And, you know, one of the things we need to remember is that Indonesia is a vast archipelago. It's thousands of islands, and uh, there are cattle in pretty much every one of those islands. Um, so the vaccines that we've already offered to Indonesia will certainly help with some of those smaller farmers. Uh, and by helping the feedlots as well, what we're trying to do is to cover all bases. Uh, this is a very serious risk. There's no way of backing away from that. Uh, and that's why it's important that as well as ramping up our measures at home, we're also working with our friends in Indonesia to help them uh, manage the outbreak there as well. There are calls to close Australia's borders to Indonesia. Are you considering that in any way? No, we're not, um, and I've received no advice uh, from biosecurity experts in Australia that that is the kind of thing that we should do. I can understand why people are calling for really drastic measures like that because this is a big threat, uh, but I've even had farm leaders say to me that they don't support uh, that kind of move. 
because of the damage that it would do to our trading relationship with Indonesia. Indonesia is Australia's biggest market for live cattle exports, uh, for wheat exports and a range of other agricultural products as well. Uh, and if we were to take such a drastic measure, um, that would undoubtedly affect our trading relationship with Indonesia, quite apart from the damage that it would do to Australia's tourism industry. To put simply, is it off the table? Yes, it is. I, I haven't received any advice from uh, the experts around biosecurity that that's the kind of thing we need to do. The advice that I've received is the things that we're doing. It's about broadening the screening of travellers that are coming back. It's about making sure that travellers know what to look for and know what to do, uh, as well as the support that we're providing Indonesia. I mean, one of the things about biosecurity and these sorts of diseases is it is a shared responsibility. Certainly, the federal government has a role, and that's why we're stepping up and doing our part. Uh, but we also need to see state governments do their part. We need to see farmers imp implementing the, the right sort of proportions at the farm gate. And of course, most importantly, we need to see the travelling public do the right thing. Um, so our message is pretty simple, that if anyone has been anywhere near a farm in Indonesia or may have come into contact with livestock in any way, it's very simple about cleaning your shoes, preferably before you get on a plane uh, or, or at, at the latest when you arrive back in Australia. OK, what other levers, though, are at your disposal in terms of stopping it at Australia's border? Um, yeah, well, I'm continuing to take advice on this because we've made clear that we will implement any sensible, practical measure that will actually make a difference. Uh, some of the things that people have called for, uh, I've been advised, probably won't make much of a difference, and so we're not focusing on those. Uh, but in fact, while there is all this attention, uh, understandably, on people travelling back from Bali, probably the biggest risk and the biggest threat in terms of how this disease would enter Australia would be more be through meat products. Uh, and so that's why we are really much more closely examining uh, parcels uh, and deliveries of freight uh, that contain meat and dairy products uh, from Indonesia because it's actually much more likely to come in that way. So anything further that we can do on that front, uh, we're up for. What we want to do is make sure that our biosecurity resources are used to their best effect uh, and we want to deploy them to what the biggest risks are rather than a range of other measures which might sound sensible but may not make such a difference. OK, well, on some of those ones that have been suggested regarding uh, passengers returning to Australia, I'm going to go through a couple of things and if you're just able to say yes or no as to whether it's under any way under consideration. So foot baths for when people return, is that off the table? Uh, at this stage it is. I am taking it further advice on this and I've asked my department to examine this closely because I know that it's something that uh, has been talked about widely by people. Again, the advice that I've received to date is that it, it's not an effective measure. Um, the chemicals that need to be used, if they are going to be effective, are very dangerous to human skin. The reality is a lot of people come back through from Bali not wearing the kind of work boots that you wear on a farm. Um, so we don't want to put people in danger from that. But we are examining options around footwear because it is something that we want to crack down on uh, in any in, and reduce any risk whatsoever. Uh, but at this stage, the advice to me is that uh, foot baths uh, wouldn't be that effective and they would cause massive disruption at our airports. OK, forcing people to ditch their shoes like their thongs when they arrive home. Again, uh, the advice to me is that that isn't necessary, but what is necessary is for people, if they've been in contact with farms or livestock, uh, to very thoroughly scrub their shoes. Um, again, that's one of the reasons why foot baths aren't seen to be effective, is that simply dipping your uh, shoes or your thongs in uh, some disinfected water or some water that has dishwashing liquid or something like that, the advice to me is that that's unlikely to remove a risk. What would remove a risk is much more thorough scrubbing and cleaning, and that's the kind of thing that we're asking people to do. But look, if people think they're at any risk whatsoever of having come into contact with them, then I'd really think ask them to think twice about whether they need to bring back their footwear back into the country. Just lastly, Minister, do you think it's inevitable that FMD will reach our shores? I don't think it is, and we're certainly going to be working very hard to try to make sure that it doesn't. I mean, Indonesia has had an outbreak before and it didn't get into Australia uh, about 20 or 30 years ago. There are a number of countries around the world uh, which already have foot and mouth disease in them, which see regular Australian travellers' uh, numbers in as well, and we haven't had that brought back. Uh, but it is something that we need to take really seriously uh, and be at constant vigilance. So uh, the advice to me is that 
uh, the risk of FMD getting into the country is extremely low, but it's above zero, uh, and especially now that it's in Bali. So that's why we will continue to implement whatever safe, practical measures will actually make a difference. Well, do you think that some industry groups then are perhaps overreacting at the risk then by what I'm hearing you say? Uh, I wouldn't accuse anyone of overreacting because I think that this is a really serious threat and I can completely understand why people are worried about it. Um, you know, if foot and mouth disease were to get into our country, it would shut down our livestock export industry overnight and that would be a crippling blow, not just to farmers and rural communities, but to our national economy. Um, so I can completely understand uh, people looking for different solutions. My role as the Minister is to listen to experts about this. This is what we've done through COVID-19. We've listened to experts uh, who, who really uh, know what the best solutions are, and that's what's helped manage uh, COVID pretty well in Australia compared to other countries. And that's the sort of approach I want to take in managing this outbreak as well. Minister, thanks for your time today. Thanks, Andrea.